the early universe, there existed extremely high temperatures, energies, and densities of matter, temperatures much higher than those in the core of the Sun or other giant stars, and densities much higher than the densities of neutron stars, unique, absolutely amazing objects of our universe. These are compact objects a few kilometers in size, with masses comparable to the mass of the solar system. And in order to simulate the conditions that existed in the early universe, in order to study the early universe, we need, in a very small volume, for a very short period of time, to recreate the conditions in which matter will exist at very high temperatures and densities. With the help of a charged particle accelerator, we can create extreme temperatures and densities of nuclear matter, thus modeling the state of the early universe. There are several huge accelerator complexes in the world, collider complexes, where bunches of charged particles are collided and extreme states of nuclear matter are investigated. The Large Hadron Collider is a one-of-a-kind facility in the International European Center for Nuclear Research, CERN. This collider allows accelerating particles, such as protons or heavy nuclei, up to an energy of 14 trillion electron volts. Such colossal energies, together with high temperatures, let us study the processes that occurred at the earliest stages of our universe's formation. In the experiments at the Large Hadron Collider, the Higgs boson was discovered. It is a particle responsible for the mass in the elementary particles. The Rick Collider at the Brookhaven National Laboratory is a unique superconducting collider with a perimeter of four kilometers, a facility that allows colliding beams of heavy nuclei, for example, gold nuclei, with a total energy of 200 billion electron volts. In these collisions, it is possible to reach such a temperature of colliding particles that protons and neutrons actually melt, and scientists can investigate the liquid of free quarks and gluons. However, at these temperatures, phase transitions occur very rapidly, and we can observe either nuclear matter in the usual state or a quark-gluon liquid, quark-gluon plasma, a phase state of nuclear matter, when quarks and gluons can be observed in a free state. But it is even more interesting to observe a mixed phase of nuclear matter. Studying phase transitions, investigating the mixed phase state of nuclear matter, quark-gluon plasma, is tremendously important to understanding the processes that occurred at the earliest stages of the emergence of the universe. And according to modern scientists, ideas, in addition to relatively high temperatures, immense densities of nuclear matter are required. In other words, it is necessary to create conditions that allow us to reach colossal densities of nuclear matter to be able to observe these phase transitions, to investigate the mixed phase of nuclear matter and quark-gluon matter thoroughly in detail. The optimal energy range in which we expect to obtain the maximum density of nuclear matter is around 10 billion in electron volts. And it is in this energy range that the future Nika Collider, currently being built in Dubna, will operate. Let us spend a few minutes dwelling upon how accelerators and colliders work. Suppose that we want to increase the energy and velocity of a charged particle, for example, a proton. To do this, we place a proton between positively and negatively charged electrodes. When a proton with a charge of 1 volt passes through, its energy increases by 1 electron volt. If you put electrodes in a closed volume from which the air has been pumped out, between these electrodes, one can create a voltage of hundreds, thousands, or even tens of thousands of volts. But to create a voltage of 1 million volts, and what's more, 1 billion volts, will not be possible. To do this, we need more complex devices called accelerators. Usually, we deal with circular accelerators, where a charged particle that repeatedly passes a relatively small potential difference 
acquires enormous energy. The accelerator part, in which an electric field is generated to increase the energy of a particle, is called the accelerator section. Every time when a bunch of particles passes through the accelerator section, the electric field boosts them, giving them extra energy. To keep a charged particle in a circular orbit inside the accelerator ring, dipole magnets are used. The magnetic field inside a dipole magnet changes the direction of the charged particle motion, and instead of a straight line in the accelerator, it is possible to make charged particles move in a circle. The accelerator ring has a fixed radius. In the process of acceleration, the momentum of a charged particle also increases with increasing energy. Therefore, in order to keep a particle in the orbit with a fixed radius at a simultaneous increase in the particle energy, we should increase the magnetic field as well. Since charged particles are accelerated in bunches, individual particles tend to spread out due to electric repulsion. To prevent this, particle beams need to be focused all the time. Such focusing is made by special devices called magnetic lenses. A magnetic lens can focus a beam in the vertical plane while defocusing it in the horizontal one and vice versa. Therefore, in order to focus the beam both vertically and horizontally, it is required to use a combination of two magnetic lenses. In the accelerator, charged particle beams are divided into separate bunches that follow one another at a strictly defined distance. This is the way charged particles are accelerated in the accelerator sections. When particles are flying through, the electric field in the acceleration section is not maximized but it is increasing. If a particle turns out to be more energetic than its neighbors, it shoots ahead and in the next circle, it comes to the accelerating chamber in advance. Because of this, it gets slightly less extra energy than the rest of the particles, and vice versa. If a charged particle accidentally loses some energy and stays at the back of the bunch, when flying through the accelerator section, it will receive a little more energy than the rest. This method of particle acceleration is called self-focusing. It was developed in 1944 by academician Vladimir Wechsler. Thanks to the self-focusing method, the accelerator section itself maintains the shape of bunches, preventing them from spreading longitudinally. It is this discovery that has made creation of modern accelerators possible. In order to use the energy of accelerated particles to the maximum, they are divided into two beams moving in opposite directions. When the particles meet, they collide head-on, and at the point of their collision, all the energy accumulated during acceleration is released. In a collider at the points where beams meet, we record the events that occur as a result of a collision. An outstanding contribution to the development of colliders was made by academician Giersch Budker. He proposed the method of electron cooling on which collider operation is based, and in the period from 1964 to 1967, he built a collider in Akadem Garodok, academic town of Novosibirsk, where he conducted the first experiments on colliding beams.